I'm Nancy, and today we're going to talk about how to find the vertex of a parabola. Did you want to find the vertex of a parabola? Well, you could watch Nancy's video. What I'm going to do is show you how to do this using Mathematica. If you're interested in that, stay tuned. So what I want to do is play this video on mute, so I'll go ahead and mute it. Um, but my goal is to achieve this maybe in the time that uh, her video is. I think it's around five minutes. So let's see if I can do that. Uh, and you can follow along. Okay, here we go. I'll play it and then I'll talk while she's doing this. Okay, so what I want to do first is build a... Oh, hang on. I gotta play it, don't I? I can't cheat. The first okay. thing you need to know is ah, I thought I muted that. The standard form of the parabola or the... There we go. All right, so she's got a little bit of a head start, but I want to build a function. Now, first, I'm just going to write a function for some kind of quadratic. So let's go 3x squared minus 5x plus 7 semicolon. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is build a conditional function that uh, gives me a list of the coefficients and produces the formula for the vertex point. Okay, there's a formula for it, so you don't have to remember it unless you're doing this stuff by hand. Okay, so I'm going to call this function g, and it will input p, but this is going to be conditional on p being a quadratic, as we would have above. Okay, so that's why I put a slash and a semicolon, because I want to put a condition next. All right, and my condition is that the exponent of p with respect to x be equal to 2. Okay, under this condition, we can um, define the function with a colon and then an equals, and so I'm going to use modules because I want to put something into memory temporarily, and let's call that L. So L will be equal to coefficient list of um, P with respect to X. Okay, semicolon, and then what I want to do is use this formula that Nancy has here, minus B over 2A. All right, so also I should in incorporate um, the values of A and B here, all right? So A will be equal to, and I've got to go put this in the bracket with module. So A will be equal to the third one, because remember coefficient list writes this backwards. Um, so this will be L3, and then B will be equal to L two square brackets, two, and then I need to go and put these up here, a comma b. I can see I'm probably running out of time. Okay, and next I want to write um, minus b over a um, is the x-coordinate here, right? So let's put this into memory temporarily also, and then I have to include this up here. Okay, and finally I can produce the point that I'm after, which is x comma f of x. Um, instead of that, let's just write p and then a, basically a replace uh, with x going um, to, and actually I'm going to have to call this one something else like z or uppercase x. Okay, great. And then I'll have to do that um, here as well, not in the other spot. Okay, so x goes to uppercase x. All right, I think that's good. Um, now, I don't really need f of x defined up above there, but let's try this out. So what I'll write here then is g of, uh, well, let's just copy and paste this just to keep it simple. 
and let's see what we have here. All right, um, now that looks okay. Okay, so next we want to plot this um, together with the curve of f of x. So I think instead, I'm going to, just going to delete this line, but I'll copy it. Okay, so instead I'm going to put in f as a variable uh, in this way. Uh-oh, I've run out of time. Oh well, sorry guys. Uh, I'll keep going. Okay, so then I can just put g of f in this spot. Why don't we get rid of this now and expand this one full screen. Okay, so g of f, uh, that produces the point. Now, what we want is to list plot this. Okay, so let's call this one here p. Uh, and then I want to list plot p uh, with the option plot style I think I can put in two things. I'll go black and uh, point size 0 0.02. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it seems like we've got two points. Maybe I have something else in memory. Oh no, that's right, I need another bracket. So what it's done is it's plotted both of these with the one and the two as the x coordinates. But that's not quite what we want here. We want to plot that point itself rather than, rather than two points. Okay, so here we go, that's the plot. Now I can even write this as a function. Um, so I'll just say h of something colon equals this list plot but uh, what I want to do is make that a function of g of f okay and then I here I'm going to put in module so that I can say p equals and have that only remembered inside the function so I want p equals uh, g of f okay and then I'll end that there uh-huh all right so I should probably try that now which would be h of g of f. You can remove that there. Okay, so we still have a plot, that's good. Um, next, let's give this a name and call that a. And then let's call b equal to um, the plot of f. And we'll have to just manually choose a plot range. So I'll go uh, minus three to six. Okay, and we want to show the two of those together. A comma B. All right, so why did that not work? So I need a two A there. Need to remember to put the brackets in correctly. Okay now looks correct. Great. Guys, so I hope that helped you figure out how to find the vertex of a parabola. And that's all for now. I'll see you in the next one.